Okay, so uh, today is, uh, I think it's the 22nd of August. <laughs> it's lockdown time, so who can remember what the date is? And this is uh, just a little bit of a life update. Um, I haven't been posting as many videos uh, recently as I should have, and in part that's just been because I've been uh, rather busy. Um, it's, it's grateful busy, um, the fact that we are able to do most of our teaching and learning and research online. And uh, yeah, that's what's been taking up my time in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think the last videos that I posted were about, uh, about the books that we've launched. And uh, of course, the academic life is always just this, this cycle, a sort of pipeline of, of research and uh, writing up your research, sending it off to publishers, uh, having it peer reviewed, getting back comments and, and requests for changes, attending to those and then sending it in while you're carrying on with the next thing. And so there have been a couple of projects that I've, I've been working on in terms of, of research. Um, yeah, and then just also online teaching, um, doing a lot of uh, uh, graduate and undergraduate work. Uh, this semester I'm teaching, uh, believe it or not, a church law module for our fourth year students, our honours students. And, um, you know, that's in, in, in large measure because uh, of, of the sad passing of my colleague, Professor Mary Ann Pleikis van Huffel, who was a professor of church law. And um, after she passed on, um, you know, being head of department, one has to take responsibility for, for what needs to happen. And uh, so I've taken on that course with, uh, with help from some of the colleagues. And then uh, also teaching this semester, um, in the, uh, the Modern Theologians and Modern Theologies course. So uh, we, we tend to pick up on, on persons, trends, uh, movements uh, that are taking place in, in contemporary and modern theologies. So that stretches uh, more or less from, from the, the early 1900s um, using David Ford's uh, notion of, of uh, modern theology from his book The Modern Theologians. If you read the introductory chapter, I'll put a link to that book in the show notes. It's an excellent book. Uh, to have and uh, so yeah we, we tend to look obviously at, at contextual theologians so people like Mercy Amba Odoyoye uh, we're doing a, a lecture on Vuyani Velem a, a black African theologian um, we tend to look at African theologies uh, you know feminist theologies black theologies but then of course we look at at uh, persons who uh, who we recognize are, are making a contribution um, elsewhere in the world, people like Serene Jones, the feminist theologian, or uh, Miroslav Volf, certainly Stanley Hauwas, uh, who's important for, for Methodists, um, but then also people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, so, so the kinds of persons, John Caputo, um, yeah, Hans Urs uh, von Balthasar, um, so, you know, and aesthetic theologies, um, so, yeah, I think, you know, those are the kinds of things that we are wanting to do. And we're always trying to help our students to understand not only what does each of these particular theologians say, what is their contribution to our understanding of, of theology, of, of God, of, of our religion and, and our faith in relation to the world, but also how do they come to, to develop their contributions? So what are the, the sort of methodological and uh, traditional uh, commitments that bring that them to that point. For example, what sources do they use? How do they use them? Uh, what do they regard as instructive or authoritative? Um, are they doing more historical, interpretive, analytical theologies, or, or are they doing something which is more constructive, uh, wanting to shape or, or contribute towards a particular field? Yeah, I've written a number of things. I wrote a, a chapter for uh, a new book uh, on David Tracy, which is coming out, being a, uh, someone who works in public theologies in Africa. I was asked to, to work on the reception of David Tracy and wrote a chapter about um, how uh, post-colonial theologies and, and living in the post-colony um, changes the reception of, of David Tracy, who in large measure is a, is a post-modernist theologian. Um, I also... Uh, submitted uh, a, a, an article for a fish for, for this colleague of mine, Mary Ann Pleikis van Huffel. And in some senses, that's, that's one of the things I want to just touch on today. You know, Mary Ann was a, a very, very remarkable woman. Um, she, she was a first of many firsts, as, as Reggie Nell, uh, the Dean of the Faculty of Theology at Stellenbosch, uh, so rightly said. She was the first woman to be ordained in the Uniting Reformed Church of Southern Africa. She was the first black woman to be made full professor at the University of Stellenbosch only last year. In fact, her uh, inaugural lecture would have been on the, the 12th of August. Um, and sadly, she passed away on the 19th of May. And um, she had two PhDs. Her first PhD 
um, dealt with with a sort of post-structuralist uh, reading of uh, gender in in the reformed sister churches in South Africa. So so looking at how the the language that we use, the symbols that we we use in our religious and social and cultural uh, worlds shape how we we structure. Um, our living, what we what we regard to be good and right and true and, and valid and necessary, and and sort of deconstructing uh, some of those those dominant narratives, and and I found that to be so incredibly useful. My my chapter in particular looked at three recent publications that that she had two chapters and an article um, late uh, before she passed away, so late 2019, early 2020, that dealt with religious freedom. Her second PhD. Um, which she completed at the University of Pretoria um, was was in church law and uh, sort of just looking you know at, at the intersection between religion and and political life so public policy and 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 the role that religion plays in the shaping of, of public life but also uh, you know considering the ways in which uh, public life impacts upon how we we exercise our faith how we develop it so yeah, it's been a busy couple of months. I, I would have loved to have posted more videos. Um, during this time, I was also acting dean for uh, a couple of weeks when, when our dean very sadly um, lost uh, a family member and, and took some time off with his, with his family um, during that time. And, and so that, that administration uh, kept me busy. But overall, I can say that uh, working from home, sitting behind my little uh, desk <laughs> in the corner of my bedroom where, where I work, um, has has not been too bad. I mean, what what many people don't know is that I'm I'm actually secretly a little bit of an introvert. You know, I find that um, I need a bit of space and time just to gather my thoughts, to to reflect, to think, to work uh, things out. And and so having that little bit of space each day uh, has been a gift. Of course, the other thing has also just been the gift of not having to to commute to work and back. Um, even though the university is only uh, 25 kilometers away, traffic is quite bad. And so whether I do it, uh, you know, on my Vespa uh, or, or on my, my e-bike, um, that, that sort of takes about 40 minutes to an hour each way. And uh, so having that extra time just to work has, has been a great gift. So I'd love to hear how, how are you doing? How, how have things been for you? Um, I'm working at the moment with, with uh, two of my PhD students who are, are trying to finish, meet the hand-in date uh, of, of 1 September and some master students as well. And, and I know other people have also been, been working quite hard during lockdown. But I also know of colleagues who've really struggled, who've said, you know, it hasn't suited them at all. It hasn't been a very productive or, or helpful time. And I think that's okay. You know, we, we need to recognize uh, the difference of who we are and that, that we all work differently. So how have you been doing? I'd love to hear from you in the show notes and uh, drop me a line. It's always great to hear about people. Um, yeah, I can mention one other project which has come off. We have a podcast which is on uh, Anchor. It's also on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. If you just search for Dion Foster, I'll also put a link in the show notes. Uh, it's called It's Not a Lecture, Just a Thought. And it's a series of about 100 episodes with my friend Reverend Alan Storey, uh, who's a wonderfully uh, prophetic minister uh, working on issues mainly of justice in the inner city of Cape Town. And uh, that's doing so well. And I hear from people all over the world, New Zealand and Malaysia and Sweden and, and all over the place who've been listening to that podcast. But I'd love to hear from you and see how you're doing. And uh, yeah, just wishing you safety and care uh, for you and for those whom you love and uh, the opportunity to, to work for justice and goodness in the world, particularly at, at this very difficult time. So thanks for watching. Remember, this is not a lecture, just a thought. You can connect with me on my website, dionfoster.com, or uh, on Facebook, Dion A. Foster, or on Twitter or Instagram, at Digital Dion. And of course, as I mentioned, my podcast on, uh, on Anchor.fm, on Apple, uh, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. So thanks for watching. <music>